were born into this world, even from the moment of conception. There are three things waiting for us. There's aging, illness, and death. Once you've been conceived, you're committed. And on the day you're born, it just emphasizes that this is going to be a life of suffering. It's suffering for the mother, suffering for the child. And since we know these things are going to happen, you would think that our education system would be designed to prepare us for them, because these are the only three things in life that you know for sure will happen to you. Aging, illness, death. And yet they don't prepare us at all. So we have to find some way that we can face these things without suffering from them. This is not to deny that there are good things in life, there's happiness in life. But you want to make sure that your happiness isn't crushed by these things. We can pretend that they don't happen and live as if they don't happen, and many people do live their lives as if aging were something abnormal, illness were abnormal, death were abnormal. But then they're setting themselves up for a fall. This is why the heedful thing is to prepare. This is one of the things we're doing as we practice. We practice generosity to give a sense of well-being in the mind. We practice virtue for that sense of well-being as well. You know that you live this world in this world. You haven't just been a dead weight on the world. You've helped other people. And there's a joy that comes from that. At the same time you realize you haven't harmed other people through your actions or through what you tell other people to say. This too is a source of joy. And then as you meditate, you develop the skills for learning how to be with pain, be with the weakness of aging, being with the pain and weakness of death, and not suffer from them. In other words, you develop strengths in the mind, strengths of concentration, strength of discernment. So as the body gets weak, you can still depend on the strength of the mind, because the body's going to get weak for sure. No matter how well you live your life, no matter how well you take care of the body, it's going to age on you. I have a friend who's now 90, who took very good care of his body all the way through his life. When it started acting up on him, he had a stroke and a few other problems. He felt first that he first felt betrayed, but then he came to his senses. He said, "Well, this is the way it is with all bodies. This is where the practice of the the mind comes in and helps you." So as the body grows weak, and the body is in pain, and then you have to leave the body. The mind isn't set adrift. It has qualities inside that it knows it can depend on. So let's work on those qualities, make sure they're so solid and strong. It takes discipline, because we like to say, well, I'm here in life, I've got this human life, might as well get as much pleasure out of it as I can. But it's a question of learning what are the results of the way you look for pleasure. And there are different pleasures. There's the pleasure of senses, sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations. But then there's also the pleasure of a mind well trained. And that's a much greater pleasure and has much better impact down the line. So it's good now and it's good into the future. When you think in these ways and you can work on the mind, then the fact of aging, illness, and death doesn't weigh on you so much. You realize that you have something that's not. It's not scarred. It's not even touched by these things inside. Commit yourself to that.